thank you very much for the opportunity to present today Cut the Cue, Engraving of Historical Film Music. The paper emerged as a result of a year-long examination of film music material from 1940 movie The Postmeister and 1948 feature film The Anger with the Poseidon. The respective musicological examinations uh, were made possible within two projects, to be in film, a comprehensive analysis of the film studio, and financed by the Austrian Science Fund and the Enge mit der Posaune, an historisch kritische Edition der Filmpartikel, financed by the city of Vienna's cultural department. One of the main goals of the aforementioned projects is the creation of a historical critical edition, uh, which will be published by Verlag Filmarchiv Austria as a part of a series, Filmmusik in historisch kritische Editionen, edited by Stefan Schmidt. The selection and publication of these works of uh, film music is not only due to their exemplary score, but also due to the unique production aspects, some of which I intend to present today. Before we start with the analysis of the film music, there are three aspects, uh, res actually research questions rather, I would like to address why edit historical film scores, why is Vienna important in this context, and why these two specific movies. Firstly, Film music is undoubtedly a form that has played only a marginal role in territorial musicology. If so, then they were either scores that were clearly exceptional, such as Metropolis, or by composers whose Uber uh, was published in complete editions, for instance Hans Eisler or Billy Walton. However, as I aim to present today, the form of a historical critical edition of film scores offers an opportunity to make a specific narrativity of this type of music transparent. Furthermore, it helps the comprehension of the audience spectator, to use the term from Michel Chion, and its contextualization. And lastly, it uncovers the historical production and creative misconceptions and misunderstandings. After Hitler's so-called Anschluss of Austria in 1938, National Socialist perception of Third Reich's now southernmost edition in its capital was safe to say unbearable. As Sabine Hacke notes in her uh, book, Popular Cinema of the Third Reich, the modernity and avant-garde spirit of Vienna is almost completely neglected and pushed into obscurity. Instead, the main focus of the film production in Postma uh, monopolized completely in the Wien Film Production Company and rolled around historical settings, especially around the musical identification. It was the intention of Wien Film's director of production, Karl Hacker, to explore in Hacker here and reach the old German film production to everything Vienna and Austria has to offer in terms of culture, art, music, landscapes, and that kind of talent. Wien Film, owing to its contextual and creative disposition, quickly emerged as sort of an antithesis to larger and fleshed out uh, film production companies based in the Altreich, Tobis, Terra, Bavaria, and Monumento Ufa. Seen from a historical perspective, even the logo of Wien Film, a treble puff enclosed in a Ufa S rhomboid, symbolizing the aspired centerpiece of the company's enterprise. Especially after the Second World War, Wien Film was characterized, as noted by Hagi here, as a subversive <coughs> refuge for artists who remained in the National Socialist Occupied Austria. Uh, one of the most vocal proponents of this notion was Billy Faust, who stated that, quoting Faust here, I made my most Austrian films when Austria existed no more. End quote. However, in order to be more specific in regard to this conference, Vienna and its film production company are crucial for the simple fact that the majority of music material survived, not just the upheaval of the Second World War, but also the second part of the 20th century, in which film, music, and material documentation perished, partially because of the so-called cinema crisis in the 60s, and partially due to the ignorance towards the art and its problems. This brings us back to the third question, why these two movies? With Gustav Uczynski at its helm, the Postmeister was the first prestigious achievement of the newly founded Wien film, employed a film de la film, cast and crew, and the film de uh, developed with great success with audiences and critics of the third right. The plot, with its anthropology and topology of imaginary Russia, offered to <coughs> Gentner, the most prominent composer of Wien film, an opportunity for one of his melodramatic scores. Here, he was able to develop his appropriation technique, which he perfected during his career in the silent film. In this regard, the stereotype of Russia 
was naturally the aesthetic linchpin of the music production. On the other hand, the anger with the Pazaune, based on the homonymous book by Ernst Wörter, historically represents everything that Vienna was, or at least presented itself to the world after the Second World War. The protagonist as perpetual victims of the events and drawing starkly in town kind of cosmopolitan history of the city into one with equally cosmopolitan and more over musical family, the anger with the Posaune taps into the source of Viennese to the point of redundancy. The director of this feature film was no one other than Karl Hattel, who, um, as we saw two slides back, was promising everything Vienna and Austria had to offer to the third way. Sure enough, a singular link between the two productions, but for the context of this conference, most interesting is not, is not naturally the film music composed by Schmidt Kempf. Replacing the musical stereotype of Russia with the stereotype of Vienna, the most prominent composer of the film gradually took over the roles in the re established, and I beg you to, to pay attention to the name, in Dobbin. The film of the Postmeister consists of 32 cues composed by Schmidt Kentner. These are preserved in the form of handwritten copied orchestral parts that were produced by the Anna Copies Office, Kava Berg. So the main task is conjoining the parts together into one score, which is closely based on the dimension of the Bianca Roman, which recorded the film music. Ultimately, it is important to take into account all individual parts or, or individually made handwritten entries correct of altered notes, dynamics, or information on interpretation. The narrative of the Postmeister is a tragic story of provincial beauty Dunya, mesmerized and seduced uh, by a silver tongued aristocrat, Minsky, with whom she wants to leave for the capital. The station master and Dunya's father, playing, played by Heinrich George, uh, one of the most prominent actors in the national, cin national socialist cinema, uh, was his only daughter to the most expressive point. Uh, the station master, Georg, finds it difficult to separate from his daughter and therefore insists on the minute, uh, joint prayer before the couple of euphorical leaves. The quasi sacral seriousness is mirrored in the film music, as exemplified by Mastinato in the strings and high woodwinds, which forms a semantic intersection of tolling bells and the ticking of a clock. However, the character of the music changes abruptly when the couple leaves. Here, Schmidt Kenton used the Motus Esposito passage of Tchaikovsky's 1812 overture as a model to bring him back into the dreamy, romantic, and melodramatic underlining of the film. Interesting because it affects the understanding of the film production. 
that conclusion becomes intriguing when you consider the forces that have influenced cuts in music. Not just the usual suspects, such as the composer, the director, the producer, the film editor, but since we are talking about the context of the Third Reich, the state censorship as an integral part of the propaganda ministry in Berlin, to which the Wien film was subordinate in most aspects. This information usually has to be explained in a wider context, but can also be partially reconstructed from an existing sheet of music. This brings us to the focal point of this paper and the mirroring of the presentation's name, having the cue. Uh, whereas the music production has tasks and fulfillments towards a particular film, it is somewhat banal, but still necessary to mention that the technical and creative decision-making outside of the musical playing dictates the role of the film music. Even with the previous example from the Postmeister, where one could speculate on the decisions and decision-makers behind the removal of parts or of cues or entire cues, the tone is set in the part of the pun by the visual material. It can uh, be easily seen that the next example from the Agamemnon of Salman, where the main protagonist of the movie, played by another lead film ability, Paula Vesely, has an audience with the Emperor Francis Joseph I. In order to accommodate the obviously edited scene, uh, the cue begins with an ostinato on A in place of the original material, supplemented by removal of 33 bars in the cue. It is important to say here that our primary guideline in creating the editions of film music is the audiovisual and not the printed or autographed music material. Naturally, the unused film music or its fragments are noted and noted, but the creation of a core historical critical edition of film music is, as it was decided on projects, based upon the film. This generates <clears throat> further steps necessary for the identification and verification of the edited material namely the form and the quality of the film. Some parts of the film were edited out not only for, or not just for ideological, but for purely technical reasons, and is a challenge working through the different versions. It is equally benefiting to encounter the possible opportunities which arise as a result of discovering new audiovisual sources, as this verifies the usage of the existing music material. Lastly, the quality of the movie is a deal breaker for the final stage of the edition's creation. As a matter of fact, due to the non-existence of music scores or parts of historical film music, some of our colleagues, editors and musicologists, have conducted an arduous undertaking of notating the score using only the audiovisual material. Thankfully, we were privileged with a surprisingly good copy of the Postmeister and the recently new DVD of the Anger with the Posama. The final film and sheet music example of this paper shows one of the composed diegetic passages back in the Postmeister, the so-called Jackson dance. The plot now takes place in an evening salon visited by Dunya, Hermasha, and their respective, well, forgive me for using a relatively modern term, sugar daddies. The music in the scene is fitting to its diegetic context, uh, considering more explicit in its mediation, and in terms of virtuosity, there is no other comparable highlight in the film. instrumentation of the passage in the musical metal level, in that Schmidt Gensman's orchestrator, Oskar Wagner, uses a bell icon ensemble, which he amplifies with two banjos and even uh, and adds four more percussionists in the ensemble. Here we have two surviving versions, the so-called Czechessentanz A and Czechessentanz B, including an additional piano reduction of the orchestral score. In the film, however, a hybrid of these two versions was utilized in the final cut, and the piano reduction was presumably used for studying sequence and dance practice of the scene on the film set. 
the majority of the existing audiovisual material can be found in the richer and longer Czechesen Tanzka, whereas the B version was utilized for the Edwin Climax at the end of this dance. Finally, Czechesen Tanz Q gives us an interesting and thankfully not so common appearance in the addition of these two films, but nonetheless um, a constant and I might add pestering issue when working without a score. Missing music parts pose a serious problem when trying to offer a whole picture of the film music and somewhat surprisingly uh, the less prominent the instrument the harder task in solving this issue. Such as is the case in this cue where it can be safely said that the missing part of the fourth horn after the remaining 31 cues are orchestrated in a four, four horn division is truly being lost and not a result of an artistic decision in the production of the score. Although, as mentioned before, the audiovisual quality is relatively good compared to its filmic contemporaries, the quality uh, from the postmaster cannot be used to pinpoint the missing parts. In conclusion, it can be said that creating such a film music edition opens up an area of conflict not only in its relationship to the film plot, but also to the film, media and music history itself. A task that requires an active neutral and factual attitude in order to be able to uh, make a reconstruction worthy of its filmic context and at the same time revive the music and its history. But to quote Evan Panofsky in his essay shortly after moving to the United States, which will in my opinion define the seventh art from the 1940s, in a film that which we hear remains for good or worse inextricably fused with, what, uh, with that which we see the sound, particularly or not, cannot express any more than is expressed." End quote. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your perspective on a very different topic, although related. Um, any questions or comments about that? Hi. It's really wonderful to see this, uh, these old parts. Uh, I work in film music uh, in the United States, and these look exactly like what we do now <laughs> in, uh, in, in very many respects. Uh, I was wondering, do your parts combine the violin at all, ever, or is it violin one, violin two? Could you repeat the question, please? Uh, do, you, uh, do, do you see parts where you have all of the violins on double staves throughout the part? No, they are, they are all separate. Okay. Uh, and then, so the, in that first violin part, then there's all that parallel to VC happening, mm -hmm. uh, which seems like it would be more confusing than helpful. But uh, it is. Uh, it's just wonderful. Thank you for showing. Thank you. Weitere Fragen, Anmerkungen? Yeah. It's interesting that particular spot in the, the part that you had. It doesn't even say that it's be easy. It just suddenly jumps to it. it doesn't, yeah. There's no indication that the player is going to survive. You mean this three, one? Then? At figure four, whatever it is there. Yeah, one. Three lines up from the bottom. Yeah. yeah. And these people were sight reading it usually. Yeah. I mean, especially, I, I was going into the production studies and being a few harmonica uh, simply got this. Um, on their um, <laughs> on their music stands and were pretty much forced to play it. And there are no, uh, there are no marks on this, this part either, indicating that perhaps it wasn't actually used. No boring, nothing. We still don't do that. Huh? We still don't put to VC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, I mean, one of the, one of, uh, one of the things that we're privileged, especially in beat film, is yeah. that we have Vina uh, Philharmonica playing the music. Uh, it, it, it sounds kind of, it sounds kind of special, especially when you consider the context that uh, they were pretty much forced to do it. Uh, but they were, um, although a lot of all the musicians from Vina Philharmonica were forced to leave, um, they were there was still a pretty good orchestra, and um, and they were able to sight read and play this kind of um, music material. Pretty much often.